My name is Rob Youngblood and I'm about ready to be interviewed by Bobby Fazio. All right, we're back at the 2022 NHRA Four Wide Nationals, Las Vegas, Nevada. Walking around the pits, looking at super stock cars. And I always love seeing stick shift cars because, you know, I drive a stick shift super stock car myself. And I saw Rob Youngblood here, who not only drives a stick shift car, but he builds clutches, services clutches, and he's an all around clutch guru. So Rob, how you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic. Rob, where do you come from? Uh, Boise, Idaho. All right, now let's take a look at your car and then you can educate us a little bit on clutch setups. This is a 76 Corvette. What kind of engine combination comes in one of these cars? Uh, this particular engine is an L48 low compression 350 with a quadrajet carburetor. All right, and who builds your engines? Uh, a guy named Mike Montgomery up in Boise. So this car in Superstock I, stick shift, um, what's the minimum weight you have to have? 3070. 3070. Now you said this was a 350. And what was it advertised, and what's NHRA rated at? Uh, it's av the NHRA is 290, and it came out of the factory 180. All right, so it came out really low, and, man, you guys really have gone fast to get it all the way up to 290, huh? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're running Sandhuff shocks on the car. Have you noticed the difference since you put those in? Absolutely. They're a great shock absorber. They do Not a really good job. Do you have any trouble keeping this car cool the way the radiator the way the hood on these cars and where the radiator is placed is yeah we did for quite a while and then we kind of learned you know that you can put these little relief valves in you know as far as uh when we turn the pump on you know you kind of run it for a little while and then we just hit this little button here and it relieves some pressure and draws the air out of the system otherwise it gets an air bubble in there and it gets hot all the time wow good good to know how about that so let's take a look inside the car uh, you want me to open that door? You want to come over here and open this door for me? That'd be great. Thank you. No problem. Oh my gosh, factory seats in a super stock car. You don't see that too often. In stock eliminator, you had to run factory seats for quite some time. Now you don't. But to have them in a super stock car is really cool. What kind of transmission do you run? We run a G-Force. Uh, it's called a G, uh, GF2400. Clutchless. Clutchless. And that's a four-speed, correct? Uh-huh. Now in super stock, you can only run a five speed if the car came with a five speed from the factory. Uh, same thing in stock eliminator. Okay, let's take a peek in the back here. Not much going on back here. You can't have any company in the car with you. And then what kind of rear are you running, Rob? I run a nine inch Ford in there with, uh, it's uh, 583 gears in it. Okay, and then the clutch, um, it's an advanced clutch, so you built these yourself. Uh, what size clutch do you want? Uh, it's a single eight inch with six levers. Now, how did you get into the clutch uh, building business? Is that something you were doing since you were young and uh, racing and kind of- Well, up? I've always ran stick shift cars and um, it was funny, I always had McLeod do my stuff. And, but I noticed, you know, over the years that you could start lightening up, you know, the pieces and and change a few things here and there and then it would help the car run more consistent and it would uh, just perform better and McLeod, George at McLeod when he was there he wouldn't do anything for us you know it, he didn't want to light parts he didn't want to do anything so basically what he did is he said if I were you I'd just go on my own and so I thought well that's what I'll do and so I you know gradually started buying a few machines here and there and went to a class on how to run CNC's and stuff, and then we just started building our own stuff. And uh, it just kind of climbed from there. Cool, what, what did you do before you went on your own to do clutches? Um, I'm an electrical engineer, and then I have a, a, a bachelor's in electrical and an associate's in mechanical. And I had my own electrical company for many years, and then we closed that down and retired that and started building clutches. Wow. Never cool. been happier. It's not a money maker, but it's a lot of fun. It that's, really is. That's 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 important. So that's good to know. So, do you um, like prefer a certain size clutch for certain cars? Like a super, what's what's the best selling clutch? I would say for super stock cars. It depends on how heavy it is and how much power you make. 
Uh, if it's a real heavy car and you make quite a bit of power, you're going to want to run a single nine uh, billet like we have with a six lever. And then if it's fairly light and you run the motor fairly high and you're not making you know, over about 650 to 700 horse, the single eight is really a nice piece. That's a good way to go. All right, and, so for somebody then, like me, we'll say, a 289 small block Ford Mustang, what would, what would you say for me then? A single eight inch disc? Yes. Do you, have like eight a, inch. do you have a base pressure recommendation I can take and run with here? Well, a lot of it depends on how high, you know, you leave. Like if you're leaving at say 75, 7800 or something like that, you know, you probably run maybe around 300 pounds of pressure. And then with the counterweight, because you probably shift it fairly high, you probably wouldn't run more than about 14 grams total, you know, on all six levers, somewhere in that area. All right. So back to your car now. How have you been running this weekend? What kind of times have you? Uh, the bought? best we ran here, which is an altitude track, we went a 996, which is like 76 something under. Um, let's see. And, uh, you know, the car is working pretty good as far as the, you know, the traction is pretty good here. It's not too bad. And uh, we made it by first round, so we'll see how we do second round. All right, so first round of Superstock was contested earlier. Second round's coming up soon. Uh, at a sea level track, how, what's the quickest you've gotten this car? To uh, 964. Wow, what kind of? 128, 60 foot. 128, 60 foot? How about the uh, mile an hour? How fast does it go? 135, 40, I think, is my best. Wow. All right, so this car is really hauling. So, Rob, we'll see how you do in the second round of Superstock. Do you know you have to race? Uh, not really, no. Okay. I don't know. Just go up there blind and just uh, let the chips fall where they may, huh? Pretty much, yeah. All right. Well, Rob, thanks for spending some time with us, and uh, we appreciate it, and good luck to you second round of Superstock. Thank you, Bobby. I appreciate it.